In today's video, we are going to talk about how to install Hadoop on Windows 11. Myself, Mohammed Zubair, and this channel is all about showing you how to become a highly paid IT pro really fast. So without any further ado, let's get started. Hadoop, which is also known as Apache Hadoop, basically it's a software library which work as a framework and it allows the processing of large data sets which are distributed across different cluster of computer and it uses the simple programming models. To install Hadoop on your operating system, there is a prerequisite and that is you should install Java first in your system. So let's see if we have Java available or not. I will just search for my CMD or you can say command prompt and in that we'll see if we have Java available or not. So I will just write here Java space hyphen version hit enter. It says Java is not recognized is an internal or external command. It means Java is not installed into our system at this moment. To install Hadoop, you should download Java 8. And this is the official website of Java. Go to the Windows section and from here, download the 64 installer. So I'll just click on it. You might have to sign in to your Oracle account and only then you will be able to download your Java JDK. If I click on it, it will take me to the sign in page. So from here, I have to sign in and after that, it will give me the download link. So I am done with the sign in process. I have already downloaded it. So I'll take you to the directory where I have my Java JDK downloaded and then we'll install it. So here is my Java JDK. I will just double click on it to install it into my Windows 11. From here, click on next. And now the process has just begun. Do not change anything, click on next. And now we will not install the Java into this path. I want to install it into my C directory directly. So I'll go to my C drive and in here I'll create a new folder with the name of Java. So I will just write here Java, hit enter. And now I'll go back to my installer. From here, I'll click on change and I'll go to my C directory and I will select my Java folder. Click on OK. Click on next and now the installation process has just begun. It will take a little bit of time so we have to wait. So we are done with the installation of Java. Before we move ahead we have to do some simple thing in here. First of all go to your Java folder and in here go to your bin folder and as you can see we do not have JDK folder. Go back to your C directory or C drive and open your program files and in here go to your Java folder. Here we have JDK folder available. I will cut this folder and I'll go back to my Java folder that I have created into my C directory. I will go into that and I will paste that folder in here. I'll click on continue because it needs administrative privileges. So we are done as we have JDK folder into our Java folder. Now I'll go back to my program files and from here I'll just delete this Java folder so that we can avoid the duplications. I will just delete this one. I'll give it administrative permissions and now we are good to go. So as we are done with the movement of our files, now it's time to set our environment variables. For that, I will just search for environment and here it says edit the system environment variables. Just click on it and in here we have to create a new variable for our Java. So I'll just click on new here and in here the name of variable will be java underscore home and its value will be the path of our bin folder. So this is my java folder in my C drive. This is my JDK folder and this is the bin folder. I'll just copy this path. I'll go back to my environment variables and I will just paste it. After that, click on OK. And now we have to set another variable under the system variable section. In here, look for path. Here it is. Click on edit. And in here, we will create a new variable for our system. For that, just click on new. And again, we will paste the same path that we have copied for our bin folder of our Java. After that, click on OK. Again, click on OK. And here again, click on OK. Now, let's see if we have Java installed into our system or not. Again, I will open my command prompt or CMD. In here, I will write Java space hyphen version and I will hit enter 
and here you can see it says java version 1.8.0 is installed into my system now if i write java c let's see if it runs this command or not well yes it is running this command it means that we have successfully installed the java into our system and it means we are good to go with the installation of our hadoop but before that we have to download hadoop first so this is the official website of apache hadoop and from here we will download our file so click on binary and this is the version i'll download 3.3.1 click on binary and it will take you to this page after that this is the first link that will download your hadoop file so i will just click on it and the download process will begin on its own here you can see it has just started i have already downloaded it as well so i will just cancel it and now i will take you to the directory where i have my downloaded file so this is my hadoop that i have downloaded earlier now we need to extract it but we need to extract it into the c directory directly just like we did with the java so i'll go back and now i will extract it so right click on it and go with show more options and click on extract files now go to your c directory so here i have my c directory and i will just click on ok and now my hadoop will get extracted into my c drive directly so we are done with the extraction and this is our hadoop folder into our c drive just open this one and here we have different folders go to your etc folder and now open your hadoop folder in here we have different kind of files that will be needed for hadoop now there are some files that we need to edit first of all like core site then after that we have hdfs site.xml then we have mapreduce-site.xml file then we have another file which is yarn-site.xml so these four files will be edited and after that we have one more file that has cmd as an extension and we also have to edit it i will show you every file that how you need to edit it and what do we need to edit in those file so first of all we will edit our core-site.xml file as you can see the extension in here i will just right click on it i'll click on show more option and i will open it with notepad++ so from here here we have the tags for configuration in our configuration tag we will add some properties for our core-site.xml file so i will write here property i will just close the tag and in that tag i will have a name and the name of the value will be name and in that i will write here fs dot defaulter capital fs after that we will close our name tag and then we are good to go with our name tag then we have to add another tag and that tag will contain the value for this name and the tag will start as value i will close this one and in the value i will write a url and the url will be hdfs colon backslash backslash localhost colon 900 and after that again i will close my tag here so we are done with the name and value now we need to close our property tag so i will just write here property and i will just close this tag and now we are good to go with the first file and now we will open our second file that will be mapreduce-site.xml so before closing this one make sure you save this file so you can press ctrl s so i will just close this one i'll go back to my folder and this is the mapreduce-site file right click on it and again i will click on show more options click on edit with notepad plus plus so again in the configuration section i will write here property i will close the tag and in that tag i will write here name just like previously and in my name i will write here map reduce dot framework dot name and now we need to close our tag so i will just close it now we are good to go and now it's time we write the value here so i will write here value and in that tag i will write here yawn now again we need to close this tag so we are good to go with this one as well now at the end we need to close this tag so i will just copy this one and at the end i will just paste it but i will add a backslash at the start of it we are good to go with the second file as well 
I will save this, close this and I will go back to my folder and this time I will open one more file that is yawn-site.xml which is at the end. Here it is. I will open this file again into my notepad plus plus so that I can edit it. For this file, we have to add two property tags. So I will just write here property and in the property, we will have our name tag. After that, the name will be yawn.nodemanager.aux-services. After that, we have to close our name tag. So we are good to go with the name. Now we need to write its value. So again, we have to have value as a tag. And after that, the value will be map reduce underscore shuffle. Again, I will close the value tag as well. And we are good to go with name and value for first property. But before that, we have to close our property tag as well. So I will just write here property and we are good to go. I will just copy this one so that I do not have to write everything again. And I will just copy it and I will paste it again. Now I will just change the name and value in this property tag. So the name will be John dot node manager dot AUX services dot map reduce dot shuffle and the value will be org dot apache dot hadoop dot map red which is map reduce and at the end i will have dot shuffle handler so i will just write here shuffle handler so now we are good to go again save this file and i will just close this one and now we only have one file remains that we need to edit and the name of that file is hdfs-site.xml here it is but before that we have to go back to our hadoop folder and in that we need to create one more folder and the name of that folder will be data so i will just write here data hit enter and in data folder we have to create two new folder so i will just go to my new and i will create a new folder and the name of that folder will be data node hit enter and now we need to create one more folder and the name of that folder will be name node hit enter we are good to go go back now we are ready to edit our hdfs site.xml file in here, I will again open it into my node plus plus and in the configuration section, again, we will have our property, then its name, then its value. But this time we need to have three properties. So for the first tag, I will write here property and in that its name and its value. So I will write here name tag and the name will be DFS dot replication. After that, we need to close the name tag. So I will just close it. We are good to go and now we need to have the value tag so i will write here value and the value will be one and this time we need to close this value tag as well we are good to go and now at the end we need to have closing tag of property so i will just write here property i will just close this one and we are good to go with the property tag as well so as we are done with the first one now we need to have two more so instead of writing all of them one and again, I will just copy it and I will paste it two times. Now I will just change the values. If you remember, we had created folder with the name of name node and data node. And now we need to use those folder and we need to add their addresses in here. So my first folder, which is name node, I will write here its name as DFS dot name node dot name dot dir we are good to go with the name and now for its value we need to have the path where we have created our name node folder so i will just write here c colon forward slash hadoop dash 3.3.1 and after that forward slash data because in hadoop we have a folder with the name of data after that again write here forward slash and here we had our name node folder here you can see now we are good to go with the first one which is name node now it's time to go for our data node folder so i will just write here data node dot name dot dir now for its value 
again we have to write the path so i will write here c colon forward slash hadoop 3.3.1 and after that forward slash data forward slash data node and we are good to go make sure you write the exact name of your folders because in case if you miss even one word your script will not run and your hadoop will not get installed into your system so we are done here with all three property tags now just press ctrl s to save this file and we will get out of this at the end we are only left with one file that is hadoop-environment.cmd file again we need to open this file into our notepad plus plus so i will just go to my notepad plus plus option and in here as you can see we have set java underscore home equal to java home so basically we need to paste the path of our java in here so i will just do that so for that i'll go to my java folder this is my java folder and in here i have jdk folder i will just copy this path and this time we do not need to have bin folder address we'll only stick with the jdk i'll go back to my file and in here i will just paste the value and we are also good to go with this file so as we are done with editing of all the files that were necessary for the configuration of hadoop into our windows 11 now it's time to set the environment variables for our hadoop as well so for that purpose i'll open my environment variables here it is i will just click on it from here click on environment variables we are already done with the java home and now it's time to create a new variable for our hadoop so i will write here hadoop underscore home and the value will be the path of our hadoop so i'll go back to my hadoop folder this is my hadoop i'll go to its bin folder and i will copy its path and for value i will just paste that path and i will just click on ok and we are good to go as we are done with setting the environment variables for our hadoop and now we need to set the path for our hadoop as well so just go to your system variable section click on path and click on edit in here we will have the path for our Hadoop. So for that purpose, I'll click on new and I will just paste the path that I have just copied. This time, we need to have one more path for Hadoop because Hadoop have two folder. One is bin and one is sbin. For that, I'll again click on new and I'll go back. This is my Hadoop and here we have sbin folder. I'll just click on it. I will copy its path and now I will click on new and I will just paste it and we are good to go with all the path and their variable into our system click on ok click on ok again and at the end again click on ok and now it's time to check if hadoop is installed into our system and if it is running or not so for that purpose i need to open my command prompt so i'll just search for it and i will open it and in here i will write some simple commands and the first command is hdfs space name node space hyphen format hit enter and it will start the process if you see some of these kind of commands running into your terminal it means that our hdfs is running at the moment so it is confirmed now that our hadoop is up and running now let's run some commands and let's see if it is working or not so for that purpose i need to go back to my home directory and now i'll go to my hadoop folder so i will write here cd hadoop hit enter and from here i need to go to my sbin folder so i will write here cd sbin hit enter and now we are into our sbin folder and in sbin folder we have a file that we need to run and the name of that file is start dash all and the extension of that file is dot cmd hit enter if you see some this kind of output it means that your apache hadoop is up and running and it is answering your commands and now you are good to go to work with your apache hadoop and that brings us to the end of today's video i hope now that now you know that how to install the hadoop on windows 11 if that is the case please leave a like subscribe and press the bell icon we'll get back to you in the next video till then take care